it seems to me that finding balance, it, a lot of people are looking for balance. A lot of people are feeling very out of balance. And it's quite easy to feel that in your own life. But what I notice is that it can become a search that is somewhat self-defeating. I see this a lot in people who've done more spiritual practice, that there comes a point where almost they don't want anything to disturb them. So it becomes another expression of that looking for perfection, looking, looking to be a good boy, looking to be a good girl, to get it all right. And that's, uh, that's an illusion. That's, uh, it, it's not going to happen like that because life is, is movement and life is not just about you. If life was just about you and there was nothing else, there were no other people and there no, no other forces out there, no other energies out there, maybe you could have some notion of balance, but it would mean no movement. Uh, there's some kind of um, inner sense that being balanced means being still, and it isn't. We know that. We know that we, when we talk about balance, we talk about it because we're in a place where there's a middle point, but you don't usually stay in that middle point. It's constantly moving around. Now, obviously, if you're tipped all the way over here or you're tipped all, all the way over there, that can be... Um, you feel very, very off balance. And so we seems to me we tend to want to get more and more and more balanced. And then when we get thrown off that, it feels very disturbing. And so my sense is that it's important in a time like this where there's a lot of change and it's very rapid. It's important to be able to really handle that and go with the ride and not be too... Um, what's the word, too sort of fussy, um, but to, to have a certain kind of resilience and ability to move, an ability to be able to be off balance and find your way back, um, but without having to feel that life is in this little kind of narrow tram line where everything's very safe and you're constantly balanced and everything's being managed very well. Because what I've noticed is when we get into that kind of tram line living, we start to get very controlling and limit things and don't want to meet these kinds of people or hang out in this kind of thing or do this sort of thing. And we start to say, I, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do that. Cause those things can throw me off balance. Um, and it's a phase that a lot of people go through, especially when uh, when you're learning about energy and you want to protect your energy. Um, and maybe that's a necessary phase to go through. Um, it's a phase that uh, business people tend to go through a lot as well. It's like, okay, I just want to surround myself with these kinds of people and these kinds of situations. But there comes a point where it's limiting and uh, you become less able to handle what gets thrown at you. So there's an interesting kind of dynamic in here. It's absolutely natural to seek balance. And yet it, it seems that it's necessary to leave room for a, a quite a significant imbalance to come in and then allow you to seek a new level of balance. It's rather like wholeness. We tend to naturally seek wholeness, but whatever level of wholeness you reach, you need to be aware that that's part of a bigger whole. And so when you reach a certain level of wholeness, you're then gonna feel really off wholeness. You're gonna feel like very small and unwhole compared to the bigger level of wholeness. And these things go together. Um, so very often as you progress and you learn more, you reach a certain level where you feel like, ah, okay, this is really working for me. And you don't want to be thrown off that and onto the next level because then everything feels really out of balance again. But that's just the way that it goes. And it's better for us to be prepared for that.
And it's better to just understand that when life feels more turbulent or it's going, there's a lot of movement, there's another balance coming, there's another wholeness coming, there's more experience coming, there's a richness in that. And to really explore the richness of the movement rather than be afraid of the lack of balance. I notice that. I notice it in myself at times and I notice it in other people that when things feel out of balance, there can be a kind of fear or worry underlying about it, like this feeling that there's something wrong. And what I've discovered, one of the biggest things that I've discovered in my life, especially in the last few years, is that whenever there's a feeling that there's something wrong, it's that feeling that does the damage. It's not what's happening, it's the feeling that there's something wrong. The minute we start to feel there's something wrong, we start to not accept life. We start to reject parts of what is happening to us. And when we start to reject things, we reject them because we're afraid fundamentally, we actually strengthen them. And so that feeling that there's something wrong because something in my life is out of balance actually strengthens the imbalance and creates more of whatever it is that we feel is wrong. So it's fine to recognize that things are not very balanced at the moment and see it for what it is. But it's when you make it wrong that things really start to go wrong, so to speak. And it becomes more and more extreme. And then you think, ah, oh, there's really something more wrong here. And you can see this in any part of your life. You can see it, uh, especially if you're very healthy. The people who I work with who are pretty healthy, if they feel any little thing, it feels like there's something wrong. If you're generally not very healthy, you don't notice a lot of that. But as you become more healthy and more sensitive, any little thing can feel like something wrong. Or once you've balanced your relationship quite well and it, it's going well and you're generally really happy together, a small disturbance can feel like something wrong. Once you've reached a certain level of financial comfort, let's say, it feels really uncomfortable when that gets disturbed again and um, you feel like, oh, I'm going backwards, I'm going back to where I was before, that's what, that's what it so often feels like. It feels like that nice balance that you've found is being lost again. And that can be almost worse than it was the first time. When you didn't have it and you didn't know, you just didn't notice very much. That's why I, people so often say in this world of personal development, that ignorance is bliss because there the feels like a kind of freedom when you didn't know any of this. Um, and the more you learn in a way, the more sensitive you become. But at the same time, if you become oversensitive, uh, you start to make things wrong again. And when you make things wrong, that's what creates a really, um, very unpleasant vibration in life. It denies that fundamental perfection. So there's an irony or there's a contradiction in all of this that when we seek for balance, it's like seeking for perfection. Um, and at a human level, that causes, always causes trouble for us. And and yet at the same time, what we're actually talking about here is the true perfection. But when we seek perfection as human beings, we're seeking to get rid of all the edgy bits, all the dark bits, all the nasty bits, all the, the shady bits. And yet they are part of the, the great perfection, if you like. So when you seek to be perfect, you seek to eliminate parts of yourself and parts of your life that are actually part of the great perfection, the true perfection. 
And so you're trying to be perfect by, but by denying the perfection. That sounds a bit contradictory, but it makes sense in the bigger picture. And that's why it gets so, um, it gets so strangely off balance when you're trying to balance yourself too hard. Balance comes much more easily from acceptance of where you are and from a curiosity and openness about where you are and not making things wrong and also not really making things right, but more being very awake, being very present in your situation, being really responsive and flexible and grounded at the same time, of course. And being able to go for a wild ride. It's interesting, the more people get balanced, the more they want some kind of wildness. They want some kind of, um, not excitement exactly, but some kind of stimulation. And it's, it's very easy to close that down life actually presents it all the time but when you get over focused on that search for balance you eliminate anything that disturbs and it's that elimination that causes the problems when we try to eliminate things from our life anything that you try to eliminate you strengthen it and it'll come up in another form it's amazing for me, uh, again, especially the last few years, I found like I can make up my mind. I, I'll decide, okay, I'm never going to do that again. Or I'm never going to let that happen again. And then the very next day, up it comes. And the situation is slightly different. And it doesn't seem appropriate anymore to say I'm never going to do that again. And it's like oh i just decided that and it doesn't feel like it's a challenge to my resolve am i absolutely sure it feels like it's just showing me that that's not the way to talk that try to eliminate things doesn't work in life uh, what i've found is that when when there's radical acceptance of everything things drop away that are not necessary. And so a new balance forms completely naturally. It's a very different way. I was working with somebody last night. Um, she's a, a naturopath. So she has a lot of knowledge about natural health and she's very curious. She's very spiritually curious. Um, but of course, if you're doing those kinds of practices, there's quite a lot of doing involved in it you know she creates formulae and um, she has a lot of different ways of solving problems and i showed her a way of um just viewing herself observing herself from a place of high consciousness and not trying to change anything at all and she was amazed because something that she thought had been a really big, dark kind of hole in her life, something that had happened when she was very small and she'd been carrying this with her for her whole life, turned out to be something beautiful. Not the facts of it, not the event of it, what actually happened in our society was not beautiful. But when she actually simply allowed it to be as it is and stopped trying to change it or hide from it or fix it or do something about it, it transformed itself into something beautiful. She was so amazed. She said, she said it just feels so good. I feel so peaceful and I've been hiding from this for my whole life I can't believe it I've been hiding from something that is just what I absolutely love we were, we're talking about the energy of it in a way but there was such healing 
in that moment for her because she recognized deep inside herself that something that she had been walking away from because it made her life feel really out of balance and really unpleasant was actually something beautiful. And so that's a good example of the, the, the great perfection that includes what we think of as all the imperfection. So that great perfection, the great balance, includes all the imbalance of our life. And that's why it's so important not to try to eliminate all the things that you don't like, but to expand, to accept where you are and to find this place of natural, there's a natural healing that can take place when you let go of being so controlling. It's very, very subtle what I'm talking about. And uh, we seem to be largely wired for a bit of a harsher way of doing things where we try to cut things and control and force stuff into place. Um, and the other thing that we all tend to do is when, when you learn about this kind of thing is just ignore things, it's just like hope they'll go away. So, oh, it's okay, I'll just leave it to happen naturally. And we ignore them, just don't deal with them at all. That doesn't work either. So it's from that place of perfection, true perfection, the great perfection, that there is radical acceptance of balance and imbalance of the extremes and the moderates and the center of life. And you let go of the need for elimination of what appears to be making you unbalanced. And the interesting thing is that then a natural new level of balance emerges because certain aspects of your life do drop away, but they drop away naturally. The, um, maybe where conversations need to be had or where there are challenging things that need to be done to change them, they happen. It's almost like you can't walk away from the conversation anymore or you can't continue anymore in a certain direction. Life will take you in a different direction. And it's interesting because this is not passive. It sounds as though it's passive, like you're just waiting for life to fix you. It's not. It's the opposite of that. It's, it's a question of where you're active. So if you're active with your consciousness, with higher consciousness, then you have the experience that life does a lot more for you. If you're active just at the lower level of the kind of being busy in life, then you have, you, you have the experience that you have to do everything because you make it all about you. So if you're a game changer, if you have something big you're doing, if you have something that's really difficult that you're doing, it's really challenging to spend all your time down in the doing of it because you don't really know how to. You actually need to connect with that much bigger consciousness and let a lot happen for you so that you can be party to the change that you're seeking to create. So that's a very, um, it's a much more expanded way of living. And it's a less detailed way of living. There will be details that need to be taken care of. Um, but it's like you're not down in the details. And you have a much bigger perspective. And there is a natural, um, we can call it healing, or we can call it a natural tendency towards wholeness and balance in that. Because you're coming from that place of higher consciousness. So there is a lot of work that you need to do at the consciousness level to enable a massive amount to be done at the practical level that you 
really probably have no idea how to do yourself. So, uh, yeah, let's explore more how this works. This is uh, game changer instructions, so to speak. Uh, it's very, that's a very different way of living from how we, you know, how we're very much encouraged to live. And it's very different from most of what you read in blogs and articles and courses that are very engaged with all the doing. How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do this? How do you do so many things, so many how to's. And yet if we're so caught up in that, we may miss the boat of the big how to. And so let's really keep our eye on the big how to and engage very consciously. And uh, the little how to's will be much better taken care of that way. <laughs>